two of the most powerful force users in the galaxy, Darth Sidious and Master Yoda. People waited decades to see the ever-weighted duel between the two, and finally in episode 3, we got a taste of it. Let's get to the point. Who was stronger? I'll firstly address it is extremely debated who had the upper hand in episode 3's battle. Yoda and Sidious seem to be drawn in a stalemate, with both showcasing their force powers, acrobatics, speed, and dueling techniques. However, it didn't seem like either one was victorious in the end. So let's do what we do best, and go to the comics, novelizations, and expanded universe for answers that the movies didn't give us. We'll begin with the most canon evidence that we have, the Revenge of the Sith novelization. During the duel it explains how Yoda pushed Sidious to the edge, and forced him to drop his lightsaber. That's why, when the scene skips back to their duel from Anakin and Obi-Wan's fight on Mustafar, we see Palpatine using a flurry of Force Lightning, but no lightsaber to be found. As Yoda deflects the attack back onto the Emperor, it even says in one sentence that the Emperor is doomed. In Palpatine's favor, however, he did knock Yoda's lightsaber out of his hand as well, and the duel they held with the Force Lightning attack at the end resulted in an explosion of energy sending both beings in opposing directions. Due to Yoda's smaller and lighter stature, he was sent further, tumbling to the depths of the Senate Colosseum. Many times we can see Palpatine's face turn from arrogant to surprised and afraid when his powers were matched, not to mention how he tried to escape in their first meeting. It can be hypothesized that he was trying to get to Vader because he could sense his danger, but nevertheless, that's not to say that Palpatine didn't have the upper hand at all. In fact, I'm going to now read you, word for word, a passage from the book explaining Yoda's perspective from the narrator's views. There came a turning point in the clash of the light against the dark. It did not come from a flash of lightning or slash of energy blade, though there were these in plenty. It did not come from a flying kick or a surgically precise punch, though these were traded too. It came as the battle shifted from the holding office to the great chancellor's podium. It came as the hydraulic lift beneath the podium raised it on its tower of durasteel a hundred meters and more, so that it became a laser point of battle flaring at the focus of the vast emptiness of the Senate arena. It came as the force and the podium's controls ripped delegation pods free of their curving walls and made of them hammers, battering rams, catapult stones crashing and crushing against each other in a rolling thunder roar that echoed the Senate's cheers for the galaxy's new emperor. When the lineage of the Jedi refined into one single Jedi, it came when Yoda found himself alone against the dark. In that lightning spear tornado of feet and fists and blades and bashing machines, his vision finally pierced the darkness that had clouded the Force. Finally, he saw the truth. This truth that he, the Avatar of Light, supreme master of the Jedi Order, the fiercest, most implacable, most devastatingly powerful foe the darkness had ever known, just didn't have it. He'd never had it. He had lost before he started. He had lost before he was born. The Sith had changed. The Sith had grown, had adapted, had invested a thousand years intensively studying into every aspect of not only the Force, but Jedi lore itself, in preparation for this exact day. The Sith had remade themselves. They had become new. The Jedi had spent that same millennium training to refight the last war. The new Sith could not be destroyed with a lightsaber. They could not be burned away by any torch of the Force. The brighter the light, the darker their shadow. How could one win a war against the dark, when the war itself had become the dark's own weapon? He knew at that instant that this insight held the hope of the galaxy. But if he fell here, that hope would die with him. A problem. For this reason, I believe he knew he had to seek exile on Dagobah forever so as to not be found, because if he died, so did the Jedi legacy with him. He knew there was a chance that if he stayed alive, he would possibly train another someday. Another point I'd like to bring rise to is that Yoda was over 860 years old here. That's almost a millennia of Force knowledge and experience, whereas Palpatine was only around 50 years old in Revenge of the Sith. While we can assume Yoda was old and frail, so can we with Palpatine. The dark side, as stated by Lucas, allows the user to become more powerful than Jedi. However, it takes a greater toll on the subject. I like to think of it as using steroids in the real world. Sure, the subject becomes much stronger in an extremely short amount of time. However, the longevity and toll that it takes on the body is much more severe. There's always a price to pay for shortcuts, and using the dark side 
was no exception to this rule. I think Palpatine's speed was something to be aware of as well in this duel. He was fast enough to block Yoda's quick attacks as well as his force lightning was so fast in the beginning that Yoda didn't even have time to dodge it or deflect it. Now that being said, Yoda is a better lightsaber duelist with his Ataru fighting style, even though Sidious has mastered all seven lightsaber forms of combat. In my opinion, if they were to fight in an open field without any objects, ledges, or obstacles to impede their fight, I think Yoda would win. He was just too fast, too powerful, and too wise to be beaten by Sidious. However, I feel if Sidious had the same lifespan as Yoda, or even another 50 years, he would have been literally the most dangerous and immortal force user in the galaxy. What do you think? Do you agree? Was Sidious the loser or the winner? Would you bet on Yoda or Palpatine if they fought in an open arena? Let me know your thoughts, and I hope you tune in to tomorrow's episode of Star Wars Theory, where we will discuss the what-if scenario of what if Obi-Wan got the hyperdrive from Watto and not Qui-Gon Jinn. This would change everything, leading Obi-Wan to fight Maul on Tatooine, and the big question, what would happen to any? Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day or night, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, and until tomorrow, may the Force be with you.